I am going to demonstrate um, my drone mapping method uh, specifically for mapping um, places like ridges, uh, natural features where you might want to map vegetation or I don't know things like fires, landslides, stuff like that. And I did do a previous video uh, with a condo complex near to where, nearby to where I live, and that one wasn't very challenging conditions. It was just flat ground and buildings pretty much. So this is more challenging because the ridges here in Hawaii are pretty steep on the windward sides of the islands where there's a lot of rain and erosion. Um, so you, you kind of get these knife edge ridges and steep slopes, uh, like steeper than 45 degrees. So you, because, it, because you're capturing ground that is at such an angle, you need, you need different methods. And um, automated software like Pix40 Map or Pix40 Capture probably isn't going to work that well in these kind of conditions because you're stuck with a grid pretty much. And a grid is going to be part of this method, but a lot of photos from angles that would capture the ground and create a good 3D 3D model. And another reason, so I have an Air 2S, DJI Air 2S. And the only way I have found to get raw photos is by flying manually and just capturing each photo manually. So anyway, I'm gonna do this demo and the first thing is you wanna do, you wanna make sure you're shooting raw. So I've got raw set up and manual white balance and manual exposure ISO uh, f-stop which is fixed in this drone and then so with the Air 2S you're using pro mode to get the manual and you usually want to stick with manual exposure so you don't have to worry about matching between photos so your your shutter should be as kind of as high as you can get. Uh, if it's sunny, I'll do one two thousandths of a second. Because it's later in the day and it's overcast or there's a cloud in front of the sun, I have to go all the way down to one five hundredth. But you wanna stay, probably that's the lowest, the slowest exposure I would go. Because if the drone drifts a little bit because of wind or whatever, that's gonna introduce blur. And also rolling shutter, but, um, that's that's kind of less of a concern if you're uh, as long as the drone is not moving while you take the photos like it flying in a straight line while you snap photos um, and so my method here is to have the drone stop every time you want to take a photo uh, so really it should only be wind and things like that that would cause the drone to move or maybe I snap the photo before it's completely stopped which you know you kind of have to try not to do the let's see the other thing is the ISO 400 is as high as I would go this drone has a one inch sensor but in low light 400 ISO it's, it's pretty noisy there's a lot of noise in the image and then I think I said white balance fixed usually 6300 6500 something like that so let me start this video and So, see that's what auto looks like, and then back to manual, and then make sure it's in raw, 6500 Kelvin. So turn off the auto. No, got manual white balance, because otherwise you're gonna have to adjust it in Lightroom or whatever. It's another thing to remember, so manual white balance. And then you generally wanna focus on the ground, make sure it's focused, and point the camera straight down the first thing is to do a set of grid grid photos, basically. So you snap the photo, move the drone a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm probably going too far between photos, to be honest, but it's just a demo. You might want to go about half as much as I just did. And in this case, I'm trying to get photos of this landslide area. 
And so you can kind of get a sense of what the computer is going to see when it's processing these to make a 3D image. It's seeing all these trees from different angles and basically creating a 3D model from those views from different angles. And you want overlap. The more overlap, the better. You can't really have too much overlap. You want to go outside your, your, your target area and inside. See, I'm going, I went outside of the landslide area. And even though it's a grid, it doesn't have to be exact at all. It really doesn't matter as long as you have enough photos with enough overlap. You know, you can go in any order. You can move sideways, forward, back. You, you really do have to be careful about the trees because the ridge or the edge of that, the side of that ridge is so steep. If you fly forward, you know, a hundred meters, you're in trees. And try not to rely on the automatic object detection on any drone. So see, I'm getting a lot of photos. If it looks like, if I feel like I missed a spot, I'll go back and snap a straight down picture there. And then you can switch to your map view. So if you, if you click like over here, you will switch between map and photo. And that's really good for seeing where you've been. I probably should have got one right there, but you can always fly back. And visually you can see really well where the gaps are. So fill in a gap there and get a little bit outside. So one thing is you're trying to capture everywhere that you want from multiple angles. So when you go way off to the side, because the camera is such a wide angle, you are getting an angled view of the target area. Even though the camera is still pointing straight down, it's just basically taking a photo that is a, a, a conical view. So you can see the trees that are more distant from the drone, or you're, you're basically getting the side of those trees. But for you know terrain like this, it's also good to get angled shots where the, uh, the camera is angled and you're getting nice high res, low distortion, center view of your terrain or objects or whatever. And because it's a slope, you probably want to get more photos uh, perpendicular to the angle of the slope. So right now I'm pretty close to uh, perpendicular to that ground. Of course, you can fly up and down too and get different angles that way. Just be really careful about flying into the trees. Now, if you're doing this with a helicopter, it'd be more challenging because you can't just stop and move a little bit, stop and move a little bit. So you kind of want to plan a little bit more and try and go in a straight line. And maybe the helicopter keeps moving, but if you're using a DSLR, make sure you use manual shutter. Um, that way you reduce rolling shutter effects, which introduces distortion. If you get a video, oh, see, I'm going lower. I try to get a little bit more detailed views. 
The different elevations also help with the 3D. It gives the software more information to work with, basically to create your 3D model. But our, so rolling shutter, if you, if you take video or even a photo with a, a cell phone and you remove like your panning like that, uh, like if you, you point a camera out the side window of your car and take a, a photo or a video and you watch the video later, you're going to see everything is slanted because the, sh the, it's kind of like old CRT monitors where it gets red in order or the, it's scanned basically, uh, pixel by pixel, the sensor. And then, so when you're moving, you get slanted. And that's one reason you, you need to stop every time you take a photo. Of course, you can also use the the photos and get a good sense of what you're looking at or video I, I know a lot of folks in conservation use video but the advantage of this 3d is you you get something that's one you know it's a 3d model and you can look at it from different angles you can if the GPS is precise enough or if you have reference points you can compare it with your future conditions you can go back and fly again and then it, you can align your data, you can, you really don't need accurate GPS necessarily. Um, if you've got objects in the, in the images and in the 3D model that you can align, that lets you compare from one point in time to another. But anyway, so that's the instructions for taking the photos and uh, I'll probably do another one for processing them, so. Thanks for watching.